Welcome back to Every Woman. In most places, men and women who die in battle are considered heroes. Lebanon is no exception. And Hezbollah celebrates those who die for their cause as martyrs. We met two women, a mother and her daughter. Both have lost their husbands. They live in a densely populated Shiite neighborhood in Beirut. And they told us, what's it like to be a martyr's wife? I was 13 when I got married. I was 14 when I had my daughter, Amal. <laughs> my husband was martyred in 1996, on the 22nd of April, during Israel's operation Grapes of Wrath. We were married two years ago. We'd known each other for 10 years before that. There was nothing left of him. He was coordinating rocket attacks at the front when he was martyred. When my husband was killed, the Association of Martyrs, which is a part of the Hezbollah organization, sponsored the whole family. They gave us a monthly salary, they paid for the children's tuition, they took care of our medical bills and even paid for entertainment and activities. The association took care of us the way a father would look after his children. My husband had a really close relationship with his daughter Emel because she's the eldest. I feel that my daughter will suffer in the same way I did because life without a husband is very difficult. It was really hard to lose a father. We were all so young and were at an age when we needed him. But with my husband, it was worse. This time I felt like I had lost everything. The last morning I saw him, he woke me up before going to work, and he said he'd like to have a morning coffee with me. We drank the coffee and watched the morning news. They were reporting on the military operation in the south. We weren't just husband and wife, we were best friends. We treat each other like equals, and we had a loving and trusting relationship. We were both very open and frank with each other. I had the freedom to do what I want, and there was a lot of trust between us. I chose Ali. I am the one who wanted him to be my son-in-law. I knew he was the son of Hezbollah and may become a martyr, and that my daughter might share my fate. I found out that her husband had died a week before she did. I was the only one who knew, and I didn't tell her. I was worried she might overreact if she found out. My friend told me she heard his name announced on TV, and I thought to myself, that's impossible. I am sure there is a mistake, that maybe she heard wrong or got the names mixed up. I couldn't believe it. It was a great shock to hear such news, particularly because I was expecting to hear from him and to meet up with him later. We buried them in our village, Majd al Zun, near Tir. Every Friday, we go to the village and visit the martyr's graveyard. We read from the Quran. Of course, it's difficult to see your father's and husband's graves. It is so hard seeing their graves so near each other. It makes me so very sad. I can't believe that they are the ones buried in this earth. It's not them that should be buried. They should be, I don't know, they shouldn't be in the ground. If there's a decree that women can fight on the front line, I will be the first to join up. I am proud of my daughter because she is now the wife of a martyr. I have three more daughters, and if a fighter asks for their hand in marriage, that's fine with me. If it were my choice, I would only marry them off to Hezbollah resistance fighters. For my daughter, I hope that when she grows up, she will live a life with no war. People everywhere wish that politics weren't part of their lives. We all want peace so that the situation we are in can end. It is the situation that creates the martyrs, not the martyrs that create the situation. I don't want any more people to die. That was a rare insight into the lives of two Lebanese widows. 
Now, our final story. Zainab Istafar reported on the war for Hezbollah's Al Manar TV. For many, she was the face of terror. She remains unrepentant regarding the reporting she did and the stance her channel took. She met us at the place where her house used to be. This is the premises of what used to be my building, and it is called a Zahra building. And um, it is a 10-story building. Um, I used to live on the fifth floor, and um, unfortunately, uh, I lost everything in this building. I lost my childhood, I lost my history, I lost my albums, I lost my books, which are so dear to me. Welcome to Al Manar News. The Islamic resistance issued the following statement. For hours, the Zionist enemy is prompting for its threats to target the southern suburbs of Beirut and targeting Beirut International Airport, as well as transmission units for Al Manar TV station. I'm Zainab Al Safar. I'm a news anchor at Manar TV channel, and I'm also a university teacher at the Lebanese State University. I like to be with students, with people. I like to teach them, especially teaching them English as a foreign language and as a second language. Hi, guys. Hi. I've been doing this job like for the last uh, 11 or 12 years. Language clear and concise. It's a multicultural uh, faculty in here, and this is what I really enjoy. They communicate their ideas, they, their beliefs to me. I communicate mine to them. And um, on the basis of not uh, fighting, not having any quarrels, but to accept the other as is. Nothing more and nothing less. If you're talking about something which is disastrous, you're not going to give a big smile and you're talking about, well, 50 people were killed. <laughs> no, of course you're going to say it differently. You have to put some acting and feelings into it. I wasn't here in Lebanon uh, during the war, I was in Abu Dhabi. So it was uh, very confronting to see someone you know talking about the events going on in your country. I was there with uh, two other uh, TV presenters. Because she was my teacher, so she's a reliable source and I trusted her a lot. <laughs> Zainab al-Safar had the courage to cover stories across Lebanon. During the war, she reported from dangerous areas, such as the Dahya neighborhood. I think Zainab did a good job as a journalist. As a Manar uh, TV reporter, reporter, you would be instant, an instant target for the Israelis. And they were trying to capture us wherever we were uh, reporting from. On the first day of the uh, attack and the aggression, um, they decided to stop us. So they s gave a strike to the transmission channel. And then on the third day, they devastated the whole building. On and on, though it's destroyed, but I don't know why. Maybe they thought that you are working underground. I knew that my house was destroyed, completely destroyed. It didn't stop me. I just, you know, called my parents and I said, guys, uh, we no longer have a house. Around 15,000 uh, 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 houses were uh, totally devastated. In addition to the 30,000 other houses that were semi-destroyed. It, it's really so catastrophic. Um, it's a crime against humanity. Each media outlet has a certain color in it. Well, at Benar TV, we also have a certain color. They affiliate directly to Hezbollah. And um, it's not something or anything to hide. Al Manar was established by a number of journalists working in the field of Islamic media. They wanted an Islamic channel that covers events in a unique way, but at the same time, one that is accessible to people of all religions and walks of life in Lebanon and the Arab world. If you're a supporter, then you are uh, biased. Uh, no. Actually, I try as much. I'm a civilian, a person whose land was being uh, occupied. How, how would I feel about it? I was trying to put myself in the shoes of the people. 
I like the policy of Manar TV. It wear the hijab and I don't think it's going to be comfortable at other media outlets. You know, Lebanese kind of people, we are always in face of aggressions and buildings collapsing on our heads. But the next day we rebuild and reconstruct. To lose a house, to lose a car, to lose uh, your work, to lose dear ones is nothing compared to losing uh, your dignity and living uh, in a condition where you cannot uplift your head and uh, say to your occupiers, leave our land. Thanks for being with us for this Every Woman special on the women of Hezbollah. This has been their story. Goodbye.